So I want to go a little bit upstream of what Chris was talking about and, um, and share this, this idea um, and this reality, this integrated DNA assembly platform my team at Arzeda put together with, with some help from some really great teams. Um, and the centerpiece of this is, of course, the echo, and that'll become apparent as I share. Um, I have a small team at Arzeda, and um, what we do is the DNA work there. So anything from building plasmids and coding our design proteins to doing work that goes, goes into strange, uh, strain engineering efforts. Um, and in case you're not familiar with the company, we call ourselves a protein design company. We're really about designing and building uh, novel proteins or, or vastly improving existing proteins to enhance our lives and protect our planet. So a little over a year ago, um, we decided to reach out to some excellent teams at these companies um, to help us with our goal of, of being able to build 10,000 plasmids in a week. And um, th that goal was set by the company um, because protein design isn't a turnkey solution. You don't say, okay, this is the protein or enzyme I need to catalyze this reaction. Uh, we'll build one and go. We need to actually test many. We need to learn um, by testing many, by building and testing thousands, perhaps. And so we set this goal of 10,000 plasmids, 10,000 designs per week. And um, so we went to the whiteboard and we thought, how do we do this? We need some help. So we came up, I'm gonna cut to the chase here. This is, this is the meat, and we'll go through the, the backstory in a second. But if there's anything that you take away from this talk, it's this figure. It's a really simple but effective platform, and it has three pieces. The first is the um, software automation, which I'll, I'll talk about. Um, the second is high quality DNA fragments, and the third is the hardware automation, which is, which is the Echo. So in this, in this platform, what, what we're doing is we have our own tool to generate DNA sequences. These, these are the sequences that uh, encode the, the proteins that we've designed using our um, computational protein design technology. So we do genetic, what we call genetic design, feed these sequences into Teselogen's design app to do automated DNA assembly design. And that, design um, process allows us to generate an assembly plan um, that we feed into their build module and we'll keep that for a couple weeks while twist builds high quality dna fragments that we're going to use in our build out once we get the plate map and um, from twist we can feed that into the system and run a workflow where we're saying okay now now we have this, this plan we have this physical dna we want it to come together um, and we don't have to think about uh, building work lists because the, so the software does it for us. So it, it automatically takes that design logic that, that was generated um, in the upstream step and produces a CSV file that allows the user to push directly into the Echo the work list instructions to carry out uh, DNA assembly setup for you know, thousands of, of constructs at a time. And all of this um, is very simple. We're just moving CSV files around or JSON files around. Um, it's, it's not, you know, this is a standalone system, going back to the previous talk. This isn't like a, a big, fully integrated system, but it, it enables us to do work that we could only dream of before. And it's accessible right now. You can go buy the Echo, you can get software from Tesselogen, you can buy DNA from Twist and you can get the DNA delivered in Echo Qualified Plates. It's an option. It was an option because we asked them to make that an option on the website. Um, all of this stuff is seamless. It feed, the outputs feed in as inputs to the subsequent steps. So let's take a step back and, and ask, like, why are we doing this? Why, why do we want to um, to build DNA when there are companies out there that actually provide DNA already? And the answer is, is multifaceted. The first is that we need to generate a lot of data, and therefore we need to build a lot of constructs that encode these proteins. We also work on pathways that, that use natural and designed enzymes to produce small molecules and fermentations, similar to um, 
Zymergen's goals that you heard about. Um, and in this case, we're actually designing some or all of the proteins in the pathways. But in order to learn and get better, we have to generate a lot of data. Um, and that can feed into our machine learning platform, which I'm not going to talk about. That's not my area. But I had to mention it, given the topic of this panel. Um, and in addition, it's, it's just way too expensive to outsource um, all that DNA construction. We're talking about thousands and thousands of plasmids for every single experiment. It adds up. So the original idea was let's build software that allows us to quickly design the DNA um, and then maybe get it out the door to, uh, to Twist or to IDT or to GenScript or someone, have them build it and ship and we transform and go or do minimal D uh, DNA assembly from there. But it turned out to be way too much money. It was like, you know, we're talking tens of millions of dollars per year to do things that we wanted to do. And the reason for that, um, the reason why we thought that we could bring down the cost is because of the nature of our protein engineering um, strategy, which is we typically start off with about 100, in this case, 67 different initial design proteins. And after we run an assay, we might down select to four, use these four as parent scaffolds to design upon to make another 685. And then from there, after a screen, we might find significant improvement in one of those and iterate again. And the next round, all of those variants come from or derived from one single parent um, protein or parent scaffold. And so you do that until you achieve your performance. And what you see is that there's a lot of shared DNA sequence. And that's actually purposeful, not, not necessarily from a DNA assembly point of view, but from an expression point of view. Because if you know something expresses well in your host, whether it be Picchia or E. coli or whatever, then you don't want to you know, deviate away from that too much. You want to use what, what you know works and then change only what you need to. The DNA only changes where the amino acid sequence changes. So what we realized, which is obvious, is that if you have a lot of shared DNA sequence, then you can reuse that physical DNA. And this is just a very trivial, trivial example of a region in the middle of this coding sequence that has some diversity. But on the five prime and three prime ends, you see that it's the same sequence that you can reuse over and over and over. So why would you ask a company to build that over and over and over and pay an arm and a leg when you could just buy it once and then um, use it across many assemblies? The trick, though, is that because you're doing many assemblies, maybe thousands, you actually need to move tiny amounts um, of your DNA around. So you need, you need the technology to be able to do that. And that's where the echo, that's where we thought, well, the echo would be a really good tool. What else, you know, what else does the echo do for us besides allow us to, to miniaturize and move very small volumes? And I like to make a case for the echo. I just made this up yesterday. Cost, accuracy, speed, and ease. Okay, so <clears throat> before we, we considered the Echo, before we purchased the Echo, it was obvious that accuracy, speed, and cost um, were, were key components or key decision-making factors um, that, that made the Echo attractive. So obviously with, the, with this particular machine, 525, you're moving 25 nanoliters at a time. Um, that's great when you're setting up one microliter reactions. Speed, um, incredibly fast, way faster than anything that we'd ever had before. And the cost, not only are, are you miniaturizing and saving on reagents and whatnot, but um, you're saving on consumables. And, um, and, and that was all fairly obvious. But what wasn't obvious until we actually got the unit in to test was how easy it was to set up and how easy it was for it to play nicely with um, a software that we're using at the time, which is um, Tesseligent's software. And I'll speak a little bit more about that in a second. We, we literally had um, DNA assemblies going within two days. It came in, 
it was going, and we haven't changed much from that point. We've done some optimization, of course, um, but that initial workflow worked right out of the box. And I've heard um, stories of other people setting up automated systems that take months, up to half a year or more. This thing just worked immediately, which I think speaks volumes. Um, Throughout time, we've since then, just over a year ago, or when we got the Echo, we've we've brought we've changed our workflow and we've made things faster, we made things cheaper. And in this particular example of about 2,000 um, plasmids that we're building, we're able to bring the cost down to four percent of the original. Meaning, if we were to outsource this as clonal DNA, um, it it would be X, and we're at four percent of that. So 25 times for the same amount of money which I think is, is phenomenal. And it's really enabled by what the Echo can do, and I haven't seen it available um, in any other product offering. And just in case you're interested, what this, what this error represents is that we're moving from actually ordering double-stranded DNA to single-stranded oligos and building from oligos, which is something that we'll be sharing more about to the community in the coming months. So how do, we, how do we talk to the Echo? How do we drive the Echo? There's, uh, Chris mentioned earlier that there are these native uh, sof software tools that allow you to um, create work lists and tell the Echo how you want to move things and how much and where do you want them moved. Um, what we, we'd already been working with a company that I mentioned before, it's Celogen, um, for our DNA assembly plans to automate that and to make our DNA assemblies basically uh, work every single time. And so what we wanted to do was extend from that point and use the, the design logic there to inform work list instruction generation and do it in an automated way. So if we're starting from our design environment here, this is just a arbitrary example where we have these different, I think um, we're building 45 uh, plasmids here from these frags. And this is what one of those plasmids looks like. We're gonna have a DNA assembly plan. This plan is gonna capture the logic. This frag goes to this plasmid. These four frags come together into this, and this frag is reused across these different assemblies, et cetera. And all of that's gonna be captured in one file that you can push into the, our limbs where we can use a sophisticated workflow management system and, and run workflows. And the workflows take that DNA assembly plan, and they take a plate map, or plate maps, typically, that um, come from Twist. Um, so here, this is actually, sorry, skipped ahead. This is an order form where we order from Twist, and that's automatically generated. And we get, get the DNA plate map from Twist, bring that together with the DNA assembly plan, and it outputs, in an automated fashion, this work list um, that can then be exported as a CSV, push it to your shared file system, and then you go down to your standalone echo and feed it into the cherry picking software and press go. And I didn't show it here, but you'll also have instructions to go to the freezer, go to this shelf, go to this rack, go to this drawer, go to this plate, pull it out, and it'll tell you which plates to set up. It's, it's uh, a complete system. It's, again, it's very simple. There's an operator. It's not fully automated or anything. Um, but it works really well. You can get a heck of a lot of work done. I just want to quickly point out that in addition to um, some of the work that we're doing with DNA assembly, we're using this thing in, in different ways. You might have seen this before, what we're calling colony arraying, in which we're taking the transformants um, from our, our, our E. coli transformants that we used to propagate our assembled DNA. We um, let them grow up overnight in liquid culture and dilute them in glycerol um, so that we're roughly at 0.75 colony forming units per 25 nanoliters so that every drop that goes up basically have a 75% chance that you're gonna get a colony. And um, we've dialed this in and optimized it. This is an earlier protocol 
but we're going to hopefully put together uh, an app note soon and share that with the community because we think it's really, uh, really helpful. And what, we're going to tie this together with um, our DNA, excuse me, DNA sequencing platform that um, we're putting together uh, in the coming months. And we'll have a complete end-to-end -end design build system with the Echo. And then from there, we're going to start tackling um, how do we set up, and a lot of people have done this already, so we'll borrow from, some, from what's already out there, um, how do we set up our assays and, and set up our uh, plates for anal analytical measurements, et cetera. So, and much like we're borrowing from those companies and organizations that have figured those steps out, we really hope that if you're interested in building a platform for DNA assembly for whatever reason that you may have, that you'd look to this as a solution because it works really well and um, everything is available right now. You don't have to develop your own software. You don't have to develop your own kit. You can trust the DNA from Twist and this system uh, all plays nicely together. All the components play nicely. So I highly recommend it. Um, not getting paid by any of these companies to say that it's, it's, it really does work. And um, I'm happy to talk more with any of you today afterwards via email. And I think we're going to um, we're going to put together something on our website soon about this whole system to explain it in more detail. Maybe, maybe give a tutorial as well. That's all I have. Thank you.